Hello, dear friends. Welcome. It's the Jordan Rich Show here on WBZ on a beautiful night in Boston and New England. And the Red Sox are tied up with the Devil Race 8-8, eight to eight, uh, another nail-biter. But we'll be here to let you know what happens. And whatever happens, there's another game after this and more to come, right? This is WBZ, and uh, we're here with a live in-studio guest in hour number one. I'll introduce you to him in just a moment. The email address, jordan.rich at wbz.com and on the web, WBZ. Uh, 1030.com, where you can tune in to the radio station anywhere on the planet, as many of you do. Hello, Peter Clark. Peter the Great, we call him, producing the program. Alrighty, it's really neat that uh, my guest is here because I, I really want to thank, and you should thank her too, your sister, <laughs> the lovely Dolly from Quincy. <laughs> and that's how sometimes these things work. A uh, caller called up and she said, you got to talk to my brother. So here you are. <laughs> Dolly, thank you very much. I know that at least one person's listening here. Oh, many, many, many more than Dolly. <laughs> but uh, Tom Serignano is my guest. He's written a memoir called The Constant Outsider. Memoirs of a South Boston Mechanic. Love the book. I love meeting you finally. We've chatted uh, by phone and email, and it's great to meet your son, Ken. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, okay, first of all, um, South Boston is a remarkable place. It's now becoming fabled in movies. I mean, the, the Hollywood shooting films in South. It's become sort of a legendary place. A lot of uh, good stuff, a lot of not so good stuff. Uh, stories about, but you, you're a product of that uh, neighborhood, and uh, I know you. You told me earlier, and I think you just told Lavelle that you're proud of that fact. Uh, yeah, I spent a lot of interesting years over there, and you know, I, I didn't realize how historic or interesting those decades were until they had long passed. You know, the '70s and the '80s. Right. What What about writing a memoir? Before we get into the story, and you and I are going to sort of compare notes about where we were in the 70s and the uh -huh. 60s. But w w what prompted you to do this? Well, that's a question everybody asks me. <laughs> but uh, it's just that once once time goes by, you finally realize that maybe your life has not been as ordinary as, as you had imagined it all those years. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, some of the stories that I would tell people, they would uh, tell me, wow, you know, you ought to write a book because... That hasn't happened to many people. And, you know, a lot of people haven't had as many close calls or interesting encounters. You've had quite a few of those, and uh, we're going to get into that right now with Tom Serignano. By the way, this book is certainly available online. It's an Amazon selection. It will tell you, uh, again, uh, the best way to order it. But uh, it's called The Constant Outsider. And the reason it's called The Constant Outsider is because you're in the midst of uh, a rather tumultuous time in Southie, in Boston, in the Northeast, and uh, you you had a lot of temptations along the way. Let's face it. Yeah, I did. Well, you know, first of all, I was uh, the, the Italian kid in the Irish neighborhood and uh, had a kind of a hard time fitting in with the uh, kids in my area when I was growing up. And uh, then in Southie, of course, that was in Dorchester. Yeah, you, you started out in Dorchester. I started right? out in Dorchester. But even while I was living in Dorchester, I was constantly in South Boston. My dad had a gas station on East 3rd Street, a repair shop. So mm -hmm. even when I was eight years old, I was wearing some shabby old coveralls, you know, rolled up around four inches or six inches. Right. And working in a gas station when most kids were playing baseball in Little League, things like that. Well, that's, that's one of the cool things about growing up um, in this environment because when you have a gas station or you fix cars, everybody, sooner or later, yeah, everybody needs gas. comes to the place and some <laughs> and we'll talk about some of these interesting characters yeah. but uh so you, your dad you know had a pretty good business worked hard he did he worked very hard he started that business in 1947 mm -hmm. and at the time it was just two gas pumps and a little office and uh, over the years he bought some adjoining properties and uh, added on to the shop uh, so did you learn sort of just by being around oh yeah that yeah. area yeah 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 because fixing cars it, it seems to be the thing that you have to have a knack for it, I think. <laughs> well, it never came easy for me. I yeah. had a lot of cut knuckles and a lot of right. <laughs> squashed fingers. <laughs> uh, Tom is from, uh, originally from Dorchester. What parish? Uh, St. Matthew's. Now, explain why did I say what parish for those people listening outside the Because everybody, w that's how you identified the section of town you were right. at. It was right. either St. Mark's or St. <laughs> Matthew's. And, uh, yeah, we lived right across the street from St. Matthew's Church almost, mm. and I could walk to school. Yeah. In fact, I liked uh, St. Matthew's so much, I stayed an extra year. There you go. <laughs> Prove that you could do it. By the way, um, uh, even growing up in Dorchester at that time, 
and not being Irish mm -hmm. was a bit of an anomaly, wasn't it? I mean, it it, they had little pockets, I know, because my, my mm -hmm. relatives are from that area, but little pockets of, of ethnic and neighborhoods, but predominantly mm -hmm. Irish. Yeah, it was predominantly. There might have been 20 Irish families, but there was the one Italian family down the end of the street, right. you know, which uh, was nice. Now, your sister, because she's called the program, and mm -hmm. that's how you're here, was telling me about the age difference. So you're you're a lot yeah. younger than your sister. Yeah, Ian, and I have another sister that is eight years uh, s separating us. So, growing up in that, see, I didn't grow up in that kind of household because my I'm I'm four years older than my sister, just two of us. Uh -huh. But w <laughs> everyone out there has somebody or knows somebody or is related to somebody who's in that situation. What, what was that like for you? It Did was... you even know the, <laughs> your older siblings that well? Well, my brother went off to college when I was just very very young. Um, my sister, Fran, who's coming to visit me in a couple of days from Colorado, uh, she's a Western, country western singer out there. Uh, she's coming. She was married, moving out of the house when I was 10 years old. And, of course, Dolly was uh, the oldest in the family. Right. And it was like I had two mothers and oh, three mothers because there were so many years separating us right. all. I had no real siblings. Just to, you know. Now, what makes your story so we say sexy, if you don't mind my using that term, Tom, I is the heard fact that, that there are some pretty <laughs> intense characters, including some people. We'll talk about the most famous of all, Whitey mm -hmm. Bulger, and your run-in with him. It's a very interesting yeah. story. But there are some people who are pretty tough. And this is, mm -hmm. uh, give us give us a sense of the era now that it all starts. We're probably in the, what, the mid to late 60s, when things start to cook a little bit for you, well, you for get me, a little older? For me, I was older, in, and I think it, it really started to take hold in the 70s and really got kind of out of hand in the 80s when drugs kind of took over the area and it was rampant um but it, you know there were everything was wide open in south boston it was like the wild west i mean there there was bookmaking and there was gambling and there was drugs and there was gang rivalries i mm. mean i mean i i went home one day after leaving a bar in south boston and looked at the TV when I walked in the door, and there's police carrying these machines out of a front of a bar. And uh, the news was that it had just been machine gunned. And then I yeah. looked, and I said, oh, my God, yeah. I just left there. You, you left there minutes before. <laughs> minutes before. And and this was a bar you had not been to. No, no, this is one that oh, oh, I oh, regularly went oh, to. Oh, a regular yeah, bar. Yeah, this okay. was my regular bar. Okay. Uh, it was called Gavin's or O'Leary's at the time. Mm. And, uh, in fact, I had just called my wife from that garage it was in the 1980s okay and told her that i was heading home and wow. uh that phone booth is riddled with machine gun bullets <laughs> well not not to <laughs> over dramatize but but when you look back mm -hmm. and there's all kinds of stories about you growing up in in that area of course you moved to uh was it weymouth i think i went to braintree yeah. braintree right yeah. but uh First. you went to the south shore mm -hmm. but uh, not to over dramatize but there mm -hmm. really was a sense that people were living on the edge in in a lot of ways. Not not everyone, but mm -hmm. you took a you took a chance if you if you uh, looked the wrong way at somebody or didn't oh, cooperate, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean you had to coexist with drug dealers um, and just about and murderers. I mean, believe it or not, <laughs> there's uh, some real interesting stories in my book about uh, you know people that were in that business mm -hmm. of killing people. <laughs> and was it um, as Sometimes we hear about the Robin Hoods, you know, those those gallant criminals who only hurt other criminals. Or was it, you know, because sometimes people glorify this lifestyle a little bit. You you tell it like it is. You're pretty stark about what happens. Well, it was mostly, you know, people people that got shot or, or hurt. It was because that was the nature of their business. But then it kind of changed when the 80s came because drugs started to influence things. And people that normally wouldn't have been prone to violence hmm. went crazy and, and started shooting people. I mean, hmm. it, it came to the point where it's like you, you got to get out of there or or that's going to affect you directly. Tom Serignano is here. His book called The Constant Outsider, his own memoir, Memoirs of a South Boston Mechanic. And you were offered the opportunity to, to get into the racket, right? To, to, oh, to hurt people. Oh, several times. Well, how, did that, how does that work? I, I mean, you, you have many stories here, but... Mm. It so starts off small, I think, at first. You know, I think once you get involved, um, you know, I had the opportunity to run gaming out of my shop, which I said no to. And then I uh, had the opportunity to store hot vehicles. And then I actually got involved in a... 
a uh, stolen car ring type thing that un- unknown to me mm. because these cars were coming from New York. And I, I think that was one story that I was lucky to get out of, one situation. 